What's going on everyone? My name is Patrick and this is part two of the Mac Pro build series, which means I'm going to install what's in this little tiny box. My Mac Pro came with the standard quad core 2.66 gigahertz. Uh, I think it's a W3520 Xeon. I decided I wanted to upgrade to the 6 core X5690. I figured it's a good middle ground between the price to performance of the maxed out system and the performance that I'm requiring. So I didn't need a maxed out Mac Pro but I wanted something that I would be able to build upon when I needed that power or if I needed that power. So the route that I decided to go was the single X5690 uh, 6 core Xeon. That's the most powerful 6 core for the LG A1366 uh, socket that they make. Um, and since this processor, or since this uh, Mac Pro, going with the, the dual CPU board, I'd be able to fit two of them in there. I wanted to set myself up so that I could do that in the future if I wanted to. So that's the route that I've decided to go. The single 6 core X5690 CPU to take the place of the single quad core W3520, I think it's 2.66 gigahertz CPU. It should be a pretty nice upgrade uh, according to all the benchmarks. It's roughly twice as fast, which will be a nice upgrade with everything that I've been doing up to this point. In terms of what's required to do this, it's really only three things. The first is a three millimeter hex key or Allen wrench. The second is gonna be some sort of thermal paste. And the third is gonna be the CPU or processor itself. To get started, the first thing we need to do is remove the side panel. To do this, around the back, you're gonna pull on the tab you're then gonna pull the side panel down and off and put it somewhere else. Now we need to release the bottom CPU tray. You have two latches on this, one on either side. There's gonna be a group of lines. These lines are gonna be the release. So you press that in and the front will pop out. Same thing on this side. Once the latches are released, you're gonna pull them all the way out and you're gonna pull the CPU tray out all the way. You're going to want to set this down being very careful. Now you can move the Mac Pro out of the way so that we can work on just the CPU tray. Now you're going to need to loosen up the five screws on the top using the long hex key. You can see right here. I've already pre-loosened them so we can skip that part. Once the screws are loosened, you're going to need to very carefully pull the heat shield up and off. Now because of the thermal paste that was previously on there, it's going to be on there and it's going to be a bit of a pain to get off. So you're going to have to be very careful with it. Now that we have the heat exchanger off, we need to pull the old CPU out. There's going to be a bar on the left hand side of it that you're going to push down and pull out. There's quite a bit of pressure on it, so you're going to need to use some force to get it up. Then you're going to flip the next part up and out of the way. And now we have full access to the CPU. I'm going to grab it on either side, being very careful to pull it straight up and out. All of these pins underneath of it, you need to be very careful not to bend any of them. If you bend them, this board is now shot. Now that the old CPU is out, it's time to put in the new one. So looking at your new CPU compared to your old CPU, you need to look at the two lines or the, the indentions on either side of the processor. And you need to look at the socket and find those two marks. In this case, right there and right there. We're then gonna need to drop the processor right on top. Again, being very careful not to bend any of the pins. All right, the processor is now in. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut it back down. And again, this is going to take some pressure, pushing it down and locking it in place. Once the CPU is on there, it's now time to put the thermal paste on. 
Once the thermal paste has been placed on the CPU, the next thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have cleaned the heat sink of all of the old thermal paste. Once the thermal paste has been applied, you then need to put the entire heat exchanger back on the board. Being very careful to match up the pins on the front and the back corners. Once it's in there, you'll use the 3mm hex key to tighten up each corner. You'll want to do it in a bit of a zigzag pattern though, just to make sure you don't over tighten any one before they're all tight. Also, make sure you don't over tighten any of them or you can damage the board. Once everything's been tightened up and put back together, it's time to put the board back into the Mac Pro. So we're now going to take the CPU board and we're going to place it on the very edge, making sure that it's set in the two slits on either side. We're then going to push it in slowly, making sure it lines up properly. And then once it matches up and these start to fold in, we're going to push them in all the way and that will lock it back in place. Now we need to put the side cover back on. And lock it up. It's about two weeks past when I originally wanted to put out this video, so I am finally just getting around to finishing it. I apologize if you were waiting on it. But getting right to the point, there's a few things you need to keep in mind before you actually do this modification to your Mac Pro. Because this is a 2009 Mac Pro, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've run the EFI update. It's a bit of a hack, but it's required in order for this to actually work. If you don't do the EFI update, you won't be able to use new RAM that's faster or you won't be able to actually use the 6-core CPU. You're bound to a 4-core. If you're able to get that far though, I doubt you'll have any problems. So, good luck. That's all I really need to say. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm available on here or if you go to mytechliving.com, if you go into the user forum there, I can answer any questions there. If you like it, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I guarantee you I'll have a lot more videos coming up very soon.